Hi everybody, Gabby here from Gabby's Garden. Today's video is such a special one. Now, I know it's a little bit longer than my typical videos, but so much happened and I just wanna share all of it with you. So I hope you stick with me for this video and you find it as wholesome as I do. <laughs> so without further ado, let's roll the footage. So we're doing the garden cleanup right now and I was carrying the bucket to dump it in the pile of grass where like all of the weeds that we've pulled out of the garden, I'm just dumping them all in a big pile at the edge of the woods and check out what I just found when I dumped this bucket. <laughs> Frankie. Hi, sweet darling. Oh my gosh. Really scared he might try and hurt it. Yeah, I'd be more afraid that the mom's gonna come out here and punch the shit out of all of them. <laughs> That's what she was standing her ground for earlier. Yeah, definitely. So, quick explanation. Earlier in the morning, we had let Frank out to go potty, and he just ran back past the garden to the edge of the woods and he was growling at a deer back there and it was an adult deer and it was standing its ground it was just totally not afraid of frank at all and it stayed there until frank literally went right up to it growling and then it finally ran off so when we found this baby we just assumed that that was its mother oh my god needs to go back into its hiding spot. Frankie? Leave it alone, Frank. How do you make a, a baby deer go back to its spot, though? Mm -hmm. it, it really shouldn't. Not so, as day of the week, the middle of the day. Let the baby go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Go back to your spot. Go on. Good baby. There's a lot of flies over here. No, 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 no. Stay, stay. Oh. Maybe she sees Frank as his new mom. <laughs> Mon, is that you? You're so different. Bye, baby. Now, I just want to say, we knew that this behavior was not typical baby deer behavior. We have come across baby deer every single summer since we moved here, and something like this has never happened. We like to observe them and we know it's normal for them to be totally just left alone. We live in a suburban neighborhood in the middle of a city. There really isn't much forest. The woods in our backyard is no more than a few acres and it is surrounded by residential streets and, and houses and stuff. So. We know that there aren't any larger predators in this area. That's why we felt completely okay with letting the baby just wander back into the woods. And although it was insanely adorable, that behavior just didn't feel right. And after we went back inside, I just 
couldn't stop thinking about that baby. I just became really, really worried about it. Okay, so it's a little later in the day and I just kept having this feeling like this motherly instinct, I guess. I, I started looking online, the flies around it was concerning and I called a wildlife rescue and she said that the way it was acting was just not typical behavior and it has definitely been abandoned. So if I could go back and, and find it again and bring it into the rescue that I would be saving its life. So I went into the woods and I just found this sweet little baby here. He's covered in flies and just totally not even bothered by it. So I'm gonna pick him up and we're gonna take him to the animal rescue. Um, hopefully save this little guy's life. It's really sad something might have happened to its mom. That, that just makes me really, really sad. <laughs> so I'm just glad that we, we found him today before it was too late. And hopefully this little guy has a chance. I know what you're thinking. I just talked about how earlier that morning we saw an adult deer standing its ground near where the baby was. When on the phone with the wildlife rescue, I did tell her about that whole situation and how we thought that that was its mother. And she did tell me that adult deer will get curious about babies that are not their own if they hear them crying constantly. And although she's never heard of an adult deer standing its ground for another deer's baby, she said that they're constantly learning new things about deer and their behaviors. There's a lot of unknowns. But she assured me that the baby coming right up to me and crying out like that was a sign that it had not eaten in a long time and it was asking for help. She said for some reason, baby deer know to come to humans for help even though when their situation is completely healthy and normal, they know to be scared of us. Anyway, when I found this baby again in the woods, it was super lethargic. It was covered in flies. They were, they were literally crawling in its eyes and it was just not bothered by it. When I picked it up to carry it into the house, it was just like hanging in my arms. It couldn't even lift its head. It just accepted the fact that I was taking it. That was a little worrisome for me. When I got it in the house and out of the heat, it did seem to perk up a little bit and then it started getting really curious. It is, it's skin and bones, look at this. Sweet pea. Hi, precious baby. You just awoke Hi. He's curious. I'm curious about you. Okay, I won't touch you. I'll just stand here. Hey, sweetie. How is the baby? Oh, you're so hungry, aren't you? I don't have anything for you. What do you think? It's so cute. We're gonna take you to a place where you're gonna get all better. Today? Yeah, we gotta take it now. It's really sick, so we want to make sure we get it to care right away. How is she going to survive on her own? Well, it's not going to be on its own when we get to the wildlife sanctuary. We're keeping it there? Yeah. She has all the proper medicine and food and everything that's going to help this baby survive. But Frank has a new buddy we need. Mm. Admittedly, I wanted to keep her too. But... I know that the responsible thing to do is to take any orphaned wildlife that you find to somebody who specializes in their care. And we certainly are not qualified or capable of providing the care that this baby needed. 
All right, so we have the baby deer in the tote in the back and we are heading to the wildlife rescue now to get this baby some help. What do you think, Cam? Good move? Um, sad, but we happy for him. Yes, it is very sad, but also good thing that we discovered it to get it the help that it needs, right? All right. Here we go. So we drove her out to a wildlife rescue and rehabilitation center called Critter Haven out in Falmouth, Kentucky. It was quite a bit of a drive for us, but we were okay with it because we wanted to help this sweet little girl get the help that she needed. There we met Catherine. She actually runs the rescue from her home and she was kind enough to allow me to record her for the sake of this video. So here's what she had to say. This is Critter Haven here. I'm Catherine. I usually keep my name out of it. It's always about the animals here. Um, so baby deer, we do not abduct without calling and talking to a rehabber first. Uh, but this one was found walking around crying, going up to humans. That's not normal baby deer behavior. Um, so, and this one looks pretty tiny, so we will go ahead and check. Now, if you look, I always tell people to check right here. This is where the stomach is. If that is sunken, the baby has not eaten in quite a while. So, and they always pick like this. That does not mean that you're hurting them. No, oh, my goodness. So it is a girl. A girl. She still has an umbilical scab, so she's only a few days old. Only a few days old. And she looks like she may have an umbilical hernia, so we'll keep an eye on that. Oh yeah, it pops out. I do feel it. Yeah. So we'll have to send pictures to the vet. She may have to have surgery to fix that if it doesn't correct itself. Okay, so it's all right. Some of them take right to feeding, some of them don't. And it can look rough, but you do have to restrain them just to keep them from hurting themselves. Mm hmm Yeah, she did not like when we were putting her in that carrier. Mm, you don't want to eat. It's okay. Sometimes they have to get to what we call extremely hungry, basically starving, before they will agree to eat. And it's, it's horrible for us to watch. But yeah. They know that we're not mom. This isn't the correct milk. And uh, it's, it's a horrible process for us and, and for them too. They don't understand. They want mom. But uh, this is deer formula made specifically for deer from a company called Fox Valley. So we have them for up to six months or longer. We don't release until late December. And we wait until after all of the gun seasons are done and mm -hmm. then we release so that they have a year to get the crap together. We have acreage way back to the river. They, a lot of them come back and visit for snacks. Aww. We do get to see several of them all the time. And it's okay to look at them. Yeah. yeah. And, and a little bit. Shy. Mom doesn't care what they smell like. I get a lot of calls of, well, I touched it. We can't put it back now. And she just wants her baby back. Yeah. Birds, bunnies, mom doesn't care. Our main goal really is just to help. Uh, we're out here minding our own business, helping animals. Educating <laughs> is half the battle to not harm the wildlife when they're just out there trying to live their own life. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Not a problem. <laughs> She has two other deer friends right now, and there will be many more flooding in. It's just the start of the deer season. Everybody, this is baby Eden. She's laying with her new friend Max. And there's another little baby boy in here in this enclosure named Lucky. And they're going to grow up together. I'm just so glad she's got a friend. I feel really good about this.
so the the point that this rehabber wanted to specifically emphasize is that a lot of times when you find a baby deer they are perfectly fine and to just leave them be so many people are kidnapping baby deer that are just exactly where they're supposed to be exactly where their mother left them and is coming back for them this this situation was entirely different i did not grab this baby and bring it inside without calling the rehabber first and explaining the situation and asking for advice and and what to do about it i know that everybody is in a hard place financially because of the pandemic and inflation and all of these rising costs and we're all struggling a little bit but if you see this video and you are financially stable and you do have the ability to to give to others I definitely implore you to donate to Critter Haven. Everything that they cannot pay for through donation, they are paying out of pocket for. They, they are doing this out of the kindness of their hearts. There's really nothing financially in it for them. They just have this strong desire to help animals and help educate about the importance of such a, a wide range of diversity in the ecosystem. And I just find that inspiring. And in some way, I just hope that this video can help out. So if you're able to go to Critter Haven's Facebook page, they have all of their donation information pinned on their page. If you have your own wildlife rescue story, please leave it down in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. And don't forget to like this video. And if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you have an amazing day. Make sure you get outside sometime this week and breathe in the fresh air and observe nature. It is so, so good for you. I, I just can't stress that enough. With that, I'll see you on the next video, and as always, happy gardening.